Hi, welcome back. Glad you could join us today. Today I have one of my little friends here. You know, I've got several letters since I've since I've shown these in the previous shows asking how in the world you go about feeding a little squirrel. Well, it's a very delicate operation. Diana has worked with me for a long time. Diana is the bird lady here in Muncie who loaned me this little rascal. And this is how hard it is to get a little squirrel to eat. That's all there is to it. Aren't they the most precious little characters you've ever seen? Yeah, poor guy. He hadn't had nothing to eat for years. You could feed them 10 times a day and they'll always be just about this hungry. Hey, you know, I have to go to work. Yeah, I have to go to work, okay? All right, I'm gonna set him right over here and let him finish lunch. And while he's doing that, we'll just get started. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me grab my palette here and show you what I've got done up here. I've got my standard old pre-stretched double prime canvas. And today I've covered it with a very thin coat of liquid white and liquid clear mixed together. So you have both of them today, clear and liquid white, because I want a translucent effect. So by putting them both on, the liquid, the liquid white is very opaque. The liquid clear, of course, is clear. Let's start out today with a little bit of phthalo blue, just a small amount on the old two inch brush. Just work a little into the bristles, something about like so. And we'll go up in here and use our little crisscross strokes, little X patterns. And we'll just very quickly put in a little, a little sky, very light. I don't want this to be very dark. Just enough to sort of tint the sky so we know that it's blue back here. In this particular painting, the sky is going to be very unimportant. We don't, we don't really care. Probably won't even see much of it when we're done. Thought today we'd do some, some big trees since we have our little squirrel there that's having lunch. Let's have a big tree that he could play in. There. Something about like that. That's really all we're looking for today. And that's about all I'm gonna do for a sky. Something about like that. All right, now then let's take, I wanna mix up a brown made from alizarin crimson and sap green. Maybe just a little more crimson than green, depending on your taste, what flavor you want it. Sort of, sort of try it and see, because everybody's different and you sort of decide if you want yours to the reddish side or to the green side, it's up to you. There. We'll just guess that that's about right there. Okay, let me wipe the old knife off. We just wipe the knife on a paper towel. I'm gonna grab another two inch brush and add a little color to it. And today, today, let's just play. Let's just play. Let's take this nice brown color and start right in here. And let's just, still using little crisscross strokes, let's just make the indication, oh, okay, we'll go all the way to the top, what the heck. All I'm looking for here is some basic shapes. I'm gonna come back and turn that into a tree, believe it or not. But all we're looking for right here is just very basic shapes. I'm gonna add a little black right down here at the bottom so we have a dark area. That'll end up being the darkest part. That'll be the shadows. There, maybe here and there. Just an indication of a little tree, a little bush, whatever. All we're doing is putting in background shape. We don't care. Cannot make a mistake. We really don't care. There, something, wherever. You just sort of figure out where they're at and drop them in. That's all there is to it. And while we have that going, shoot, tell you what. Let's just go down here. Ooh, I hit a little red there. That's all right. Doesn't matter. Must not mix the color well. So we'll just go ahead and cover the rest of the, the canvas here with just color. That's all. Not like that. There. All right. But that's all there is to putting in a little background for this particular painting. There. Okay. Now we can take our liner brush, a little paint thinner, a little bit of that same brown color. We want this to be very thin, very, very thin. Something about like it. Almost the consistency of ink. All right, let's go up in here. Now, 
back in here, there's gonna be a few old tree trunks and limbs and sticks, wherever you want them. You decide where they live. If your paint's thin enough though, it'll literally just slide right over there. And we're gonna put leaves and stuff on here, so don't worry about a lot of detail. A few of them will show through, but we don't, we don't worry about much. There, see, something about like that. And maybe right there lives another little rascal. Wherever you think they should be. There he comes. Just as many or as few as you want. Like that. Okay, a few little indications over in here. Once again, I'm not looking for a lot of detail here. All we're looking for is just indications. This is going to be in the background. Too far away to really worry about it. Too far away. There. See, just an indication. Don't you like that little squirrel? Isn't he a mess? You know, it's, it's fantastic. There's people like Diana Schaefer that I mentioned here in Muncie, but people like her all over the country that take care of these animals, injured and orphaned animals, and they do it strictly out of love. There's absolutely no financial reward to it. In fact, most of them support it out of their own pocket. And it's done. It's done strictly and completely out of here. It's just, it's just for love of these creatures. And to Diana and all the people around the country who take care of these animals, I tilt my hat because I think you're the most fantastic people there is. All right, I'm gonna use a little round brush. And we're going to a little bit of the yellows, all the yellows, a little bit of the bright red here and there. Ooh, nice color. But just tap it to load it. That's all you're doing, just tapping. And by going through these colors, there's actually layers of colors on your brush. All different colors in there. Okay, let's go up in here. Now then comes the fun part. Let's begin picking out our tree. All we need was a little background. Now we can go in here and begin picking out all the little individual shapes that make this tree an individual. This little, this little small round brush is fantastic. It's, we have a, a round brush that's big and one that's small. This is a small one, but you could use either one. Whichever one you have, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There. Okay, see, but just think about shape and form here. Build individual bushes in there. Now you're sort of seeing it from a, a different angle than I am. So it might look a little different, but when we get a straight on shot, it'll look right to you. And we're varying the colors, just, just sort of varying the flavors a little bit. There comes one, just pick them out. Pick them out, pick them out, there. They live all back here, all back here, wherever you want them. There's a happy little tree. <laughs> In my world, everything's happy. Once in a while I'm adding a little bit of that brown to the color that I use just to keep it dull. And a little bit of the bright red. Up to you. You decide. You decide. All right. And we don't want this one left out. We'll put a little bit over in here. But I'm tapping with the top corner of the brush. Top corner of the brush. There. I hear my little squirrel over there on the other side to, of the studio. He's still looking for the rest of his dinner. I don't think he got it all. And in reality, there's four squirrels in the box, so they wouldn't be lonely. So they're just having a good time over there looking for lunch. There. All kinds of little bushies. See, by varying the flavor a little bit or the color, you can make them stand out from one another. Try to leave some dark at the bottom. Try to leave a little dark down at the bottom. That way the next one will show up. Work in layers, doing the bush or the tree that you think's the farthest away, and work forward, forward, forward. Always working forward. And begin thinking about the lay of the land. 
or plains, whatever you want to call them, it doesn't matter. But the way the land flows, that's what we have to start working on. There. Shoot, let's get this old two inch brush here and go into some nice, same colors, the yellows and the, all of those. A little bit of bright red here and there, but just tap, push. I want to push up that little ridge of paint. Then we can come back in here and we can begin laying in little, little indications, once again, of the lay of the land. Maybe something about like that. There, but just vary the colors. Maybe this is a little fall scene. There, but isn't that neat? That's all there is to it. Just something about like that. There. See, in that dark undercolor, automatically it picks that up so it's brighter out here than it is there. Let the canvas and the paint work for you. Shoot. It's a lazy man's way of painting here. There. I look for ways to, to make it easier. Let's take a clean brush because we have liquid clear under there and it's transparent. It'll begin looking lighter in color. And if you have a little paint thinner on your brush, it'll cause the liquid clear to begin to react. There, because liquid clear and paint thinner have a violent reaction. There we are. Now we can just use this brush, what the heck, put in another little bush there using the top corner of the two inch brush. Let's put a little brighter color on the brush and highlight that one a little so it stands out. See, that's all there is to it. If it doesn't stand out, change the color a little bit. And then it stands right out as an individual. Take our liner brush, a little bit of brown, and here and there and there and here, we can put in the indication of a few little sticks and twigs, wherever you want them. See, that's about all we need, just some here and there, not too many. Don't want it to look too busy. Maybe right in here. But that helps create the illusion of distance because it shows, once again, more planes in your painting, more areas that it moves back. All right. You ready for your bravery test? It's time. Let's use a little filbert today. Check out your bravery. We'll use that brown we made from sap green and, and alizarin crimson. I'll load a lot of paint on the brush, just a lot of paint. Let's go up here on a big tree. Maybe an old big tree lives right there, right there. Let's, let's really make a big tree. I like, let's give him a lot of arms. I like trees with character. Okay, why not? <laughs> this is our world. We can do anything here that we want to do anything here that we want to do. My little squirrels need a place to, to really play. Shoot, this is just like, this is like going to the, to the carnival for them. They can run up and down this tree, have more fun. Mm. All right, maybe wherever. You decide where your limbs live on this tree. Big old tree. Maybe right over in here even does not matter. Just about any way you can paint a tree, seems like somewhere there's one that looks just about like that. That's the nice thing about doing landscapes. If you paint a portrait of somebody and you put the eyes in the wrong place, chances are they're going to notice. Chances are. But if you paint a tree wrong, somebody will come along and say, oh, hey, I know that tree. He's an old friend. He lives in my front yard, has for many years. So you can't hardly do it wrong. I'll take a little white, a little bit of that same brown. Just mix them right here on the brush. No big deal. See, just sort of mix them. Think about where our light's coming from. Maybe we haven't really determined this painting. Maybe, maybe it's coming from the left today. Doesn't matter. It's up to you. So we'll put a little highlight over here on the left side of the tree. Just let the little filbert brush just bounce along in place. So the, the paint's thick here. Let the highlights pick up the paint. Just let the highlights 
or the high spots, I'm sorry, I said highlights, high spots on the paint pick up the color. Sometime when you get my age, the tongue gets over the eye teeth and you can't see what you're saying. There. All right. Something like that. Oh, okay. But that's, that's a nice little way of making a tree. And you can really spend some time and make one that's got a lot of detail in it. And we need to put a few little arms on him. I'm gonna put some leaves on him so it doesn't much, it doesn't much matter. It doesn't much matter. Any area of the tree you don't like, you just put leaves on it. The areas that you do like, you leave them naked. Let the, let the limbs show through. There we go. And each painting will be different. Everybody's painting will be different. That's the beauty of it. There, let's see, wherever. Just want to put a few indications. Once again, I won't cover this up with a bunch of leaves, so most of this will disappear. But a little of it's going to show through. And people will thank you. Work for weeks trying to put this rascal together. All right. Tell you what, let's use just a plain old one inch brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of that brown color I made, a little bright red, mix it together. A little more yellow ochre. Yeah, that's nice. Just gonna tap the brush into it, something like so. I'm just looking for a color that's a little darker than what I want to highlight. Yeah, that's good, that'll work fine. I'm just gonna tap in some basic little shapes. This is the absolute easiest way I know of putting a lot of leaves on a tree. Just tap in some basic shapes, that's all we're doing. Just tap, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're gonna come back and highlight it. And put the, put the nice colors on the outside of it. That's what really makes it sparkle. This is just dark color so our light will show up. Because you can't you can have light in a painting unless you have dark. As I've mentioned before, it's just like in life. You really, you really can't know happiness. I don't believe unless you've known a little sorrow in your life. Otherwise you wouldn't know when the happy times come. Now, I'm gonna take another, another one inch brush. I have several. Put a little bit of the, a little bit of the liquid white on it. Cause you know our golden rule, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. So I'm thinning this just a small amount. And the yellows are a little thinner than the other colors anyway. I want them even thinner. A lot of paint, look on the end. A lot of paint, let's go up here. Now then, I'm just gonna very carefully pick out the highlights here by just touching. Just by touching. Once again, this is absolutely the easiest way I've ever seen of putting a lot of little leaf indications on a big tree without doing a lot of work. Just reload the brush frequently. There, just frequently. Put in all your little highlights wherever you want them to live. Wherever you want them to live. There, hope you enjoy all the little critters that we put on the show. If you've painted with me before, been with me before, you know that they, they really do make up a very important part of my life. And I like to share them with everyone. Because I think it brings in an awareness. These little critters, we gotta take care of them. Get on my soapbox here, but I think we have to take care of these little rascals. I'd like for my great great grandchildren to be able to see animals. And not just in zoos. There. I let my little squirrel, you probably remember him, Peapod the Pocket Squirrel, that was with me for so long. I turned him loose because I don't keep any of these animals. But he hangs around the house. He stays there. And every day when I walk out, he comes running to me. And we just have a good time together. Anyway, let's just take, put something like so. See, we just take a little brush and tap it in. There. I'm gonna put a little color in that, but not a great deal. 
the color that we have on the canvas here will do most of it for us. Just a little indication here and there. A little bit of the bright red. There. Let's take a fan brush. Use a little bit of that light brown. Same color we use for the background of the tree leaves up here. Just gently, gently, just want to put the indication of a little, maybe there's a little path right there. It looks like a natural place. A little, little light color, a little bit of white. Not much. Not much. Just enough to make it stand out a little better. There. Something about like that. So it gives indication that maybe, maybe somebody's walked back here into the woods. Had a good time. Let's take a filbert, put some brown on it, put brown on both sides. And on the one side, uh, just one side only, I'm gonna put light color, see? So it's dark on one side, light on the other. Dark, light. Now maybe in our world there lives, this is your bravery test for real. Right about there. Maybe there's an old fence, what's left of it. It goes right on out. Make that one a little darker. Maybe, maybe they had, maybe this old fence had some, a lot of little arms in it. Maybe they patched it up a lot of times. See, it's, it comes across like so. This is just a double loaded filbert brush. Very easy to do. In fact, maybe, maybe back in here. You can see that fence just going wee off in the distance somewhere. Just an indication. Comes around the tree. How's that? It's our world. We can do anything. A couple old boards that live right there. There we go. Out, down. There. But isn't that a neat way of making an old fence? Works very easily. Take a little bit of the color. Just all the colors we use. Put a little indication around his foots down here of some shadows coming back. Just a few little things. We don't want a lot. About like that. This is a, just a very peaceful little woodsy scene that's it's easy to do. If we had time, it'd be neat to paint a couple little kids or something walking down here going fishing or maybe back in the woods to play. Let's go back to our little filbert with some brown on it. Ah, well, let's see. Not a big tree. Just maybe there's an old tree that lives right there. You thought I was going to do a great big tree, didn't you? Just a little old tree. Maybe this tree's dead. Got some old worms hanging out here, though. There. Something about like that. Boy, that's a pitiful looking old tree. He had a rough life. He's like me. There we are. You know, I travel around and meet a lot of the people who, who watch the show across the country. One of the things they always are surprised about is that I look taller in real life than I do on TV. If you've seen my son on here, the one we call Shorty, he's nearly six foot six, and I'm nearly six two. So we're we're pretty tall rascals. There. Put a few little weeds and sticks around some of these things and shoot. We're about to the point. Have a finished painting. I think we'll take a little red, sign this one, call it done. Really hope you've enjoyed this little painting. It's very simple, it's something you can do, and it'll make you happy. Bring a lot of joy to your painting life. So from all of us here, we'd like to wish you Happy painting, and God bless, my friend.